So good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and uh, thank you very much to Christoph and to EV Box for inviting us here to uh, present this afternoon and I'm joined by my <coughs> colleagues uh, David Ollier who's our Head of PR Public Affairs and Com Communications and perhaps uh, for, for a company certainly our size uh, a, 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 an interesting role we also have our Head of Infrastructure Richard Turnbull, which when we went out to recruit was a, a very, as I say, a very interesting role, quite a challenging role to, uh, to recruit for, but we re recruited from the uh, EV and infrastructure <coughs> industry to, 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 to bring that role together. Um, but uh, uh, as many of you will know, uh, or maybe not, uh, London Taxi Company uh, has a very exciting year ahead of us. We've just moved into our new manufacturing and research and development facility in Coventry in the UK. So this is a 30 million square, uh, sorry, 30,000 square meter facility uh, that's been uh, built in the last 12 months. And this is where the new electric taxi will be built. Um, we have our official opening uh, next week and it's a very exciting moment for us. Uh, later this year, uh, the new electric taxi will be launched in uh, in the UK, in fact in London, so in the final quarter of this year, we will start our first customer deliveries. So as I say, something to look forward for us as a company, but also for the industry, I feel, and, and most importantly for our customers. And for us, when we think about our customers, we think of our customers historically perhaps as the driver, but we've looked again, and of course, it, importantly, there are really four key stakeholders for us. Uh, for us, uh, yes, the driver is a key, key stakeholder in there. But also, of course, importantly, are the passenger. And passengers' needs and demands are changing. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Likewise, uh, the, the key stakeholders, so legislators and regulators, but also the industry as a wider body is a key stakeholder in our business. And finally, uh, our customer base is made up of two groups. It's the it's the individual owner who drives his taxi, which forms uh, quite a large group in the UK, perhaps 50% 50, 50 of the taxi drivers. But it's also uh, the uh, larger fleets who operate and own either employ drivers or lease them out and rent them. So an interesting, uh, interesting group for us. So before I uh, talk a little bit more about uh, uh, our own product and plans, um, it's perhaps uh, I important just to share with you uh, how we see uh, the key uh, trends that are shaping urban transportation. So mobi mobility uh, is an increasing, as we see it, an increasing demand for personal mobility service services in our, city, in our cities, which are both safe and importantly accessible for all. Urbanisation has been talked about a lot today and, and is, is central to our strategy going forward. So, as we've heard, the city populations are swelling as they become the factories of the future and places where people both work and live. So, in some cities, uh, as there's an estimate that urban populations will double in a period up to 2030. And we heard earlier that London will grow in that same period by 2 million people, so growing by, I think, something like 25%. So cities are growing. Environmentalism is, of course, critical uh, in going forward. So growing city populations and the demand for mobility in cities is creating si significant pressure on infrastructure and the environment. Air quality concerns are now right at the top of the political agenda. Um, as we come to understand, the impact on poor air quality is having on our health. And again, to quote a figure in London, London uh, alone, air quality is responsible for 10,000 deaths per annum. So turning to the consumers, our passengers, as I said earlier, are changing. We see across the world from Europe and USA to China and India a trend away from the traditional forms of ownership towards a consumer model that seeks access on demand through apps and app-based technologies. In the US we are seeing fewer people learning to drive and car ownership among younger city dwellers is definitely declining. So it's this context that, LT, that LTC sees a growing demand 
for sustainable forms of urban transportation. For LTC, our focus is very much on the commercial operator that has very unique needs for his or her vehicle. Taxi drivers and commercial operators use their vehicles to earn money, and so they're extremely sensitive to cost. Having EV range at any cost is not an option for the cost-conscious operator. Range anxiety is experienced at different levels for commercial operators compared with passenger car users due to very high daily mileage. Having 200 kilometers range may be fine for 99% of passenger car users, but will not be enough to re remove range anxiety for taxi drivers. Thirdly, taxi drivers have such unpredictable duty cycles determined by the randomness of their next job, that they need to have a range guaranteed. The customer rushing to catch their flight will not want to wait 13 minutes for a vehicle to charge. And finally, and most importantly, drivers need a vehicle that is proven, dependable and durable. Any time off, during the ro off the road, as we heard actually earlier today, is lost earnings for a taxi driver, and an unhappy taxi driver is something that we certainly at LTC do not want. So we're developing products that will build upon our design heritage and world-leading expertise in purpose-built, fully accessible taxis for urban environments. That means a recognised and trusted brand that symbolises safety and professionalism. It offers wheelchair accessibility, uh, unrivaled passenger functionality, uh, a long-term durability. Joe talked about the 15-year age limit in uh, London, for example, and sorry to say this in a room full of Europeans, a 25-foot turning circle to ensure events, even in the busiest and most congested cities, it's an easy manoeuvre to turn and uh, make a, a, a three-point turn. So our 70-year history gives us a very strong platform for the next stage in our product, product development, which combines all that is great about a London taxi with cutting-edge EV technology that works for the commercial operator. So we've developed the platform that that it meets, so that it meets the needs for cleaner air in city centres and the need for lower running costs, suitable range for demanding and, and unpredictable, unpredictable duty cycles and for durability. Our new vehicle is 100% electric driven, utilising industry proven technology. The battery pack is designed to meet the needs of the city taxi driver, but the vehicle's range can be extended with a backup of a three-cylinder 1.5 litre petrol generator available when required and can be switched on by the driver. The driver will also appreciate the technology from the driver's seat with built-in world-leading safety systems and technology as part of the electrical architecture of the vehicle. So the platform is the perfect solution for commercial operators and city regulators. In a city like London, the range is such that the vehicle can operate with zero emissions in urban centres where poor air quality is most acute. Drivers can use their range extender on longer trips outside the city centre or to sustain the battery on their commute to and from their work. So this setup is part particularly important while infrastructure networks are being developed and scaled up. The other key element uh, of the new vehicle is the body structure, which is lightweight to improve range and efficiency. It uses bonded aluminium for strength, safety and durability. In fact, the construction is more often uh, akin to something seen in the aerospace industry. And I talked earlier about our new factory. This was fundamental in the design and development and the decision about building the factory, which includes its own body assembly plant. 
But we're meeting the challenges of the commercial sector by combining design, <laughs> functionality and EV technology with extended range to produce a high quality product that we consider to be the ultimate vehicle for moving people around in a sustainable way. We're now running an exhaustive test program to ensure the product is 100% proven in all conditions before it goes on sale. And this photograph is uh, just literally uh, just over a week old. It's from testing in uh, the north uh, in Norway, uh, where we were doing cold weather testing, and uh, we were very fortunate to feature on the, the BBC National News a week ago with an article about this. So it's a great shot, and there's some great uh, photography of the vehicles moving. But that's for a, another day, perhaps. City trials in London uh, uh, will also take part, and will also take part in other major cities in the UK from July this year. And as I said earlier, uh, the vehicle will be launched and first deliveries to customers will be at the, uh, at the beginning of uh, October. So in conclusion, there are significant and multiple drivers creating the demand for safe, accessible and sustainable mobility options in urban centres. At LTC, we believe in the new all-electric taxi and we have the vehicle to meet these needs. The range extended electric vehicle technology at the core of our new taxi will be ideal for the commercial operator and should we believe be supported through policy. And finally, to deliver our vision, a critical mass and strategically located infrastructure is essential to cities moving towards commercial e-mobility platforms and ultimately achieving the air quality benefits. So this is not an infogram at all, but uh, for more information on the new electric taxi, uh, we've uh, set up a, a, a microsite uh, to count down to zero. The countdown to zero, is, of course, <coughs> refers to the 1st of January 2018, when all new taxis uh, licensed in London must be uh, zero emission capable, and we will have that vehicle. So. Please join us in registering and learning more over the next few months until we officially launch and start those first vehicle deliveries. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That really looks like a, a London taxi. It does. But maybe before uh, the, the screen is on from Busmaster, let me ask you, do you export the taxi or is it only for the streets of London? Well, we, we very much hope we will be exporting and uh, uh, there, are, there are a number of cities that have presented today, not least Amsterdam, uh, but also Oslo and other cities across uh, Europe where we want to start our exports in 2018. So our first left-hand drive vehicles will be delivered in the final month of this year. That's the plan. Great. There are a lot of questions on charging, so there, there are charging experts here. So we see a range extended vehicle with fast charging. Could you explain a bit about that? Sure. So the vehicle is, is, is absolutely capable of AC and DC charging. So both is available to us. And as I said earlier, it does have the range extender. We have to remember that this is a commercial vehicle and the operation of the vehicle is for a commercial uh, use. So it's all about that immediacy and that accessibility and that availability. But critically, it, it will be running around the city in pure electric mode, and that's at the, that can be governed by the uh, driver, so he has the manual intervention, and that's the way it's designed to operate. So when it's in those city locations, it's running around pure electric. Okay. You mentioned the driver, but there are also questions on the driver. Who will be the driver? Lots of OEMs build <laughs> autonomous vehicles. There's no yes. driver. Yeah, no, that's that, that's a good question. I think I think for now, I mean, uh, autonomous vehicles, as we've we've talked about today and we've heard, are definitely coming. Uh, but uh, there's no question. Uh, I think autonomous vehicles in London, for example, will perhaps take a little longer. The streets uh, of London, for those of you who know, are, are are built over many hundreds of years. Uh, they're not gridded. So uh, there are some challenges, and look, fundamentally, our customer, one of those four customers, is the driver, and uh, certainly for the foreseeable future, that's our plan. 
But so of course, so we'll develop in time. First with the driver, and then uh, some uh, car manufacturers say we'll skip the plug-in hybrid phase. We'll jump to full electric immediately. You made another choice. Could you explain? Well, I think for us, we do want to stress that it is pure electric. So the, the, it's electric driven. It's not, it's not a, a hybrid at all. So it's a range extended electric vehicle. I think the key thing is, at the end of the day, this vehicle can carry up to six passengers at any time, plus the driver, um, with luggage as well. It has to have a range that's suitable for the customer requirements. So for us right now, the right technology is this pure electric vehicle with a range extender. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.